Welcome back everyone to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan and today something a little bit different, a little bit special. You guys all know back uh, a long time ago I mentioned that I think the most important thing that you need to go overlanding is you need a reason, you need a purpose to want to get out in the backcountry. What are you doing? Are you fly fishing? Are you hiking? Are you visiting different cultures and trying street food? Whatever your reason is. I think that becomes like your motivator for why do you want to head out and do this in the backcountry. And so anyway, you might remember I said that my reason was that I love getting to remote hot springs. And so all over the world in North and South and Central America, all around Africa, I have gotten to a lot of really great wilderness hot springs. And when I came to Australia, I guess I was a little bit downtrodden, a little disappointed. Australia isn't known for its hot springs. But it does actually have a couple. Most of them we would call warm springs, but that's okay because the weather here is so hot anyway, a warm spring is enough. But today, I am going to legitimately a hot spring. The water is very hot, it comes out at about 60 degrees Celsius, so plenty, plenty hot enough to go for a swim. But unfortunately, this hot spring is unlike any other in the entire world. This hot spring is heated because of the decay of uranium. So it's heated by radioactivity. And that's not how hot springs normally work. What that means though, is that the water is radioactive. So as much as I want to, I doubt I'm gonna go for a swim in this hot spring. So anyway, that's our mission for today. You can see I'm pretty excited about it. Here we are bumping along some desert tracks. I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll bring you along for the whole ride. Let's go and check out the world's only radioactive hot spring. As we make our way out through the desert here, I'll give you guys uh, a bit of information about this place. And I'm gonna do that while I'm still in the Jeep because I don't wanna spend too much time at the hot spring. It legitimately is radioactive. Uh, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. But let's back up a fraction. You may or may not know how hot springs usually work around the world. All that it is, is water runs down through the Earth's crust and it basically gets close enough to the center of the Earth that it gets hot because there's a whole bunch of lava and stuff down there. And then once it's hot, it, you know, it kind of turns to steam or it gets so hot that it's all pressurized. And then that forces it back up out of the Earth somewhere else, usually. And you don't actually have to go down very far at all to make a hot spring hot. Usually the temperature rises like a lot after it's only gone down about 10 kilometers. So most hot springs in the world that you want to go for a swim in, the water has only gone down about 10 kilometers, something around that. And then it comes back out again somewhere else with a crack in the crust or something like that. So that's how hot springs normally work. And so as a result of that, the level of radiation is usually extraordinarily low. So the one hot spring in Canada is actually called radium hot spring. You know, you might think therefore there's lots of radium in the water or that somehow it's got to do with radioactivity. But the measured levels are extraordinarily low. Something I read once was that if you spend your entire life in that hot spring, it would be the same as like one x-ray, the amount of dose that you would get. So hot springs around the world, they're not radioactive, except the one that we're driving to right now, this Paralana hot spring. And actually we found some articles where NASA scientists have spent quite a bit of time studying this hot spring. They're really interested in it because it has some bacteria and some algae and things like that growing in it that actually can survive, even though one, the water's really hot and two, the water's radioactive. And so they studied it. They were interested thinking, maybe that's what the first life on Earth looked like. Maybe that's what life on other planets might look like. And so they were interested in, you know, how did it survive? And if they were ever gonna find life on Mars, maybe it would somewhat resemble what is in this hot spring that we're about to go and look at. So it's quite famous, this Paralana hot spring. Uh, and the way that it works, essentially, Australia has the world's biggest uranium deposits. And so yes, much bigger than Canada, bigger than Russia and China, Australia has a lot of uranium. And there's a huge debate about what Australia should do with it. Should we be refining it and selling it to countries who want to turn it into weapons? I don't know. Should we sell it to countries that want to make nuclear power plants out of it? Maybe. And then should we be storing it? But anyway, so we have all of this uranium 
and it turns out here at Paralana Hot Springs there is so much uranium and it's decaying. When uranium decays it gives off heat, it's actually heating the water. So the water itself has not gone down very far at all. This isn't regular hot spring water that's gone down 10 kilometers, nearly touched lava and come back up again. This is water that's barely below the surface, but there is simply so much uranium in the rock that it gets hot as a result of that. Uh, and I did find a couple of reports that have like a chemical analysis of the water and they talk about the dissolved minerals and how heavy the water is and all that kind of stuff, the dissolved uranium. And as well as the radioactive water, the part that kind of concerns me a little bit more is that radon gas actually bubbles out of this hot spring. And so that is radioactive gas and it's heavier than air, so it sits down low. So all of the health warnings and all the websites say, never visit this hot spring first thing in the morning because all the gas from overnight will have accumulated and be sitting down near the ground. And they say, try to visit it only on a windy day so that hopefully the gas has been dissipated. And so that's why I'm telling you all of this now while we're driving to the hot spring, because I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time hanging around and yammering about all this cool stuff while I'm breathing in radioactive radon gas. So this is a pretty interesting place as far as I'm concerned, and it's going to be really heartbreaking to know that it is, you know, a wilderness hot spring that I can't actually jump in. Because usually I like to jump in hot springs, I've been in some very murky ones, some very muddy ones, all different kinds all over the world, but in this particular case, I think I'll have to resist. One really amazing thing about this place is we read online that in the 1920s and 30s they actually used this place as a health spa. So I guess back then they thought radiation could be good for you and that it could help treat certain ailments. And so apparently this was quite the destination. Lots of people would come out here. They had a whole building, they had a bathing house, all that kind of stuff. And then I guess they figured out that the radiation probably wasn't doing them any good. And so that quickly got shut down. And ever since then, the health advice is under no circumstances should you get in the hot spring, you definitely can't camp out here or anything like that. And so with this whole thing, I have one question that still is unanswered and maybe someone out there knows the answer to this. I really want to know how radioactive is this water? I read everything that I could find online and of course really quickly everyone just says, don't get in, you know, it's bad for you. I'm like, okay, but how bad? You know, are we talking like one chest x-ray or are we talking like 40 million chest x-rays? Being a scientist, being that I really like things to be measurable, I would love to know and it occurred to me, you know, I wish I had a Geiger counter, which of course I don't. I don't even actually have a thermometer to tell you how hot it is. But I would love to know, you know, quantifiably, how radioactive is this thing and is it really going to have long-term health consequences if you just get in at once for five minutes? Or is it more like it's gonna take 10 hours or kind of repeated exposure or, you know, obviously if you drank it, that would be really bad. But yeah, I wish I could find out the actual numbers because I like to know these things. So we're just driving into the springs right now and there's an old sign here on the fence, I'll read it out to you. It says Paralana Hot Springs. The geothermal, geothermal waters of Paralana Hot Springs issue from major earth crustal fractures in this vicinity that date back one billion years. These geological faults which once poured forth large quantities of lava now facilitate continual geological movement of the surrounding mountain region. These waters are heated by hot rock at shallow depths and by radioactive mineral decay, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, radon gas and helium bubble forth continuously. Because the Paralana Springs contain small amounts of naturally occurring radioactive elements, swimming in or drinking the water constitutes a health hazard. Wow. So we're just driving through a gate here and uh, I guess we're here at the springs. I actually don't know what to expect. So let's check it out. So this is really cool. There's an explanation here of what the Aboriginal peoples uh, named this place and thought of this place. And so their story is that two mates were traveling together and one threw his fire stick into the water, which remains bubbling in hot water to this day. So 
cool little explanation there of obviously Aboriginal people knew of this place. I wonder if they ever used it and if it you know, caused health hazards for them. So here we go. This is actual Paralana radioactive hot springs. And as with most hot springs, it's not a lot to look at. It's kind of just like this slimy green creek. I guess this is that algae that the NASA scientists came to study. And I've seen it bubbling a couple of times, not much. You can see though, the water is actually flowing. There's quite a little bit of flow rate happening there. And I've just been upstream like 20 or 30 meters. I think probably what's happening here is it's just coming up through the ground in like, you know, this stretch of like 30 or 50 meters or something. And so it's just picking up a tiny bit of flow rate with every little bit that it goes along as it comes out of the ground. And as much as I want to put my hand in it to find out how hot it is, I think that's a really bad idea. So I'm not going to do that. Um, here we can see it's actually flowing pretty well. So this is it, this is the hot spring. I mean, if we were in Canada right now and if we knew this wasn't radioactive, it would take me about 35 seconds to clear out all of this algae. And, oh yeah. Yeah, I can tell that water's quite warm even without touching it. But yeah, it would take me about 35 seconds to clean out all this algae, dig a little bit of hole here in this sand and have a really, really nice soak. I mean, this setting looks pretty nice to me. The sun is just starting to creep down behind the mountains. So this is it. Given that it's radioactive, given that it's a bit dangerous, it's kind of unassuming. You kind of wouldn't know it. So here it is, the world's only radioactive hot spring, believe it or not. Here I am downstream, just another 50 meters and you can probably hear that and clearly see it. There is a decent amount of flow rate here. So the water really is moving. And I guess it just moves down and down this kind of valley and turns more into like a regular old creek or a river. This green algae is still everywhere though. But I tell you what, there's a few spots here. It'd be pretty good for a soak. So there we have it. That is Paralana Hot Springs radioactive as they are. Probably time to get out of here before we spend any more time. So I hope you'd enjoyed that little mini adventure. I really didn't know what to expect. The road was way more adventurous and rough getting out here than I expected. The hot spring, yeah, I mean, often they really are just kind of like slimy, murky water bubbling out of the ground. I mean, the water's crystal clear. And so, you know, any ordinary hot spring, definitely I'd be in there in a heartbeat. So don't worry, the slime doesn't hold me back, but the radioactivity was. So if you've enjoyed the video, do subscribe, do hit the thumbs up button. So many more adventures to come from Australia, exploring these stunning mountains here in South Australia before we head further out into the desert. I'm really excited for adventures to come. So have fun out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.